What is up guys? It's Tony Holiday. And today I want to talk to you about an underrated feature in Logic Pro. I'm talking about Logic's untagged loops feature. And what that is, is it's basically a loop browser, sort of like Apple loops, but for all of your third party loops. So rather than you kind of going around your finder or other folders that you've put on your desktop or downloads and just kind of not having your loops in a nice organized place, Logic has this feature called untagged loops where you can put all of your loops into it and it'll actually analyze them and put them by tempo and by how many bars they are. The one thing that it doesn't do, however, is have the key. It's still a really great feature. It's something that is kind of overlooked a lot. I don't know many producers that use this that I work with in Logic, but I think it's a really great feature and I'm gonna show you guys how to add that into your Logic Pro today. So there's two different ways to add it into your Logic Pro. I'm gonna show you both ways. They're both super simple both really quick to do. But yeah, let's get into Logic and I'm gonna show you how to add the untagged loops feature into your Logic Pro. Let's go. All right guys, now we're in Logic. I'm going to show you how to add untagged loops to your Logic Pro. So as you can see here, this is just a blank project that I've started with uh, nothing on it, just a single instrument. And I just have my uh, customized control bar up at the top here. And the one that we're gonna be working in is this one here, which is Apple Loops. You can also access this by pressing O on your keyboard. So if I press O there, you can see that this comes up. These are all of the Apple Loops that come with the additional content that you download. If you don't have that, I highly recommend doing it. And that's where if you go up to Logic Pro, Sound Library, and you go download all available sounds. Now, mine's a little bit messed up because I had a computer crash. So this actually isn't recognizing all my available sounds. However, I do have them all here. But basically what you wanna do is make sure you have all of those and then you have all these additional Apple loops. I think there's like 60 or 80 gigs or something like that. There's some really great loops on there. In fact, if you go through this, you can find, I think actually, let's see if I can find it. If I play that too long, I might get copyrighted. But if you recognize that track, hit the comments below. But yeah, lots of great loops come with Apple Loops and I highly recommend downloading the additional content. Now, something interesting that you might not have with yours is I have this section here, which is called Untagged Loops. So if I click that, I have all these extra uh, folders here, which have been added by me. And if I actually click into these, I can see that I have these loops and they're also organized by beats as well as tempo. The one thing that they're not organized by that's a little bit disappointing is they don't have the key in them like Apple loops. However, typically when you do download third party samples, the producer uh, will list the key on there as well. At least if you get them from Splice or other reputable third party samples. But if you're sharing them with your friends and stuff, just maybe ask your friends to give you the key as well. But the tempo and beats will be analyzed by untagged loops. So if I play this. Those are playing the actual loops that I have in there. So this is kind of like a nice loop browser and they'll automatically play as I go up and down the list here. So this is so much easier than just going through your finder and pressing play and you know, listening to things through that. I love this because it just plays it as if you're sort of on Splice or using the Splice loop browser. Now, a lot of people might ask, why don't I just use the Splice loop browser? Well, this allows me to actually have third-party samples that aren't from Splice. And I also just like having everything under one software. It's just easier for me. I like it that way. What you can also do is preview these at the project tempo. So we're at 120, which is the default that I've set. You can also do the original tempo. So if I do the original one here, Let's go to like some pretty big drastic changes. So the original we have, let's do 133. And then the 79. And that's almost playing in double time kind of, but. And then you can do preview at the project tempo. So if I speed this up, let's do like 180. It's a lot faster that time. So again, Cool feature in Logic, I really like this. I use it to organize my loops that I get from other people. But let me show you how to add this into Logic and then we can go from there. All right, so what I've done is I've closed Logic after deleting that old untagged loops folder. So now you can see if I press O on my keyboard, it's just Apple loops. There's no untagged loops section here on the right. 
So I'm gonna show you how to add this now. So there's two ways we can do this. I'm gonna show you the long way first, which isn't really that long. And then I'm gonna show you the other way really shortly after that. First off, what we can do is once you're in Logic like this, you can open up your Finder and I'm gonna just do some Caps and Pro Audio. We'll do some guitars. So let's say I wanna drag in this on um, one right here. So I can grab that and I'll go and hover it over the top. And now if I close the finder here, you'll see it says add to untagged loops. If these audio files have a constant tempo, start on a downbeat and end on a beat, they will adapt to the project tempo when previewed or added to a project. Add to untagged loops. And now when I did that, you see that it made the other tab here, untagged loops, and it has user loops and it has this guitar in it that I just dragged in. And the nice thing about it is it has the amount of beats in it as well as the tempo. And it is at 90, which is what the splice uh, listing listed it as. So that's kind of easy. What we can do is just drag it from the finder over top of our Apple loops. It's going to create the untagged loops tab. Great. Well, I'm going to show you how to do it another way, which is also really easy. So we're going to close logic up. So what I've done is I've just deleted that uh, untagged loops folder or just dragged it to my desktop and renamed it. So now you can see if we go into Apple loops, it's just the Apple loops again, it's not an untagged loops tab. So this is the second way how to do it. So you're gonna to go to your file browser in Logic by pressing F. What I've done is I just went to my untagged loops folder that I dragged out and I just called it one untagged loops so it doesn't have the same uh, directory in it. Now when I'm over top of these folders, let's say I wanna do that same Caps and Pro Audio uh, bedroom beats, I actually just right click the folder and go add to untagged loops. So it's the same kind of prompt, add untagged loops, add to untagged loops, click that. And now if I go to my Apple loops, you see I have untagged loops. And I go in here and it's all the 808s, drum loops, guitars, everything I wanted. Now we have the untagged loops tab. It's great for browsing. We can add different folders and samples in there now from whatever we want. And it's gonna add them and analyze them, giving us the beats and the tempo from there. And we can actually preview them with the tempo speed or the project speed. It's a really nice kind of in-house sample um, housing, really. The nice thing that we can do too is you can actually just add the Apple Loops by going into your audio music apps folder, which is under music, and there will be the untagged loops folder. And I'll show you how to do that really quick. So here I am in uh, audio music apps folder, and this is just under music here. If I go to untagged loops, you can see that I have my Caps and Pro Audio folder here. Now we can add the samples directly into this folder and they'll be automatically analyzed by Logic. So then when we open it up, it's gonna simply have them in there ready to go. Let's do this one here, the DJ Luian, and we'll copy that over to the untagged loops. We can open Logic back up. And if I open this up by pressing O on my keyboard, untagged loops, we have the DJ Luian tonal loops and they're all analyzed and ready to play. So you guys, that's the untagged loops feature in Logic. I highly recommend using it. Add your third-party loops to it, add splice loops to it. It's all gonna be housed within Logic and they're all going to be uh, analyzed by a tempo and analyzed by the beats. I think it's a really great way for you to just have everything organized and keep Logic nice and tight when you're making your projects. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out more Logic Pro and music production related content. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's It's Tony Holiday. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.